Hey everybody, it's James Quick, and today I'm gonna to tell you about the essential shortcuts you have to know in Visual Studio Code. All right, so before we really dive in, I wanna give you guys a little bit of background on why I think this video is important, and it comes down to something really, really simple. It's your efficiency. You know, the amount of time it takes for me to move from your keyboard to your mouse, if you could, if I had video, you'd see me kind of demoing this now, but the amount of time that it takes to do that really adds up over time. So to be the most efficient and to write code as fast as possible, you wanna keep your hands on your keyboard as much as possible and keep them away from your mouse as much as possible. Stay away from the mouse. The good thing about a lot of the shortcuts I'm gonna show you is that they will work in many, many other programs, whether it's other editors like Atom or Brackets or Notepad++ or something like that, or Chrome, and I'll kinda of call out some of these things that, that work in different programs. But another cool thing is not only will these commands work in other applications, they will work the same for Windows as they do on a Mac. So I'm currently on my Mac, all of my commands, most of them will have the command key, shortcuts will have the command key involved, and in Windows you just substitute command for control and you should basically have the same functionality. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got this uh, this HTML file here open, and it's got kind of breaking down how we're gonna how we're gonna walk through these shortcuts, and it's got some some basically kind of a worksheet that you can do yourself if you want to practice. So I'm gonna start out really basic here. The first two copy and paste. You can select a word and you can right click and you can copy, and then you can right click and then you can paste. All that is on your keyboard, or excuse me, all that is on your mouse. You want to avoid that. You want to stay on your keyboard. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to double click to select Voldemort and do Command C to copy and then come down and do Command V to paste. And if you know me at all, you know I'm a big Harry Potter nerd, so uh, I'll have a lot of, probably a lot of Harry Potter references throughout a bunch of my videos. But so that was, that was select a word, Command C, and then Command V to paste it. So uh, there's also, you can copy an entire line. And so you might think, oh, well, I'll come in here and I'll select this entire line and I'll do the same thing, Command C and then Command V. Well, in Visual Studio Code, and this is really one of the things that I love most, and it's very small, but it, it's very helpful, is that to do a, a command or a shortcut for an entire line, you don't select anything, you just navigate to that line. So notice my cursor is on this line. I can do Command C. And then I can come, come down here and do Command V and it pastes the entire line. So it knows when I don't do a selection, it knows to go out and, and do whatever I'm trying to do to that whole line. And you'll see this come out in, in several different examples below. So let's say that you wanna do something like this word Voldemort up here. Let's say you wanna get rid of it there and you wanna paste it down here. Well, you could come in and you could do Control C and then you could delete it and then come down and do Control V and paste it. Well, there's an even shorter way. Uh, the same way you can do a control C, you can do a control X to cut. So cut will copy it to your clipboard and then delete it. Then you can paste it the same way you did copy and paste before. So also if you wanna do that same thing for an entire line, again, just click on the line, do a control, or excuse me, command X, click down here, and you can do a command V to paste. So again, this is another one of those situations where you do a command for um, a highlighted text, it'll do it for that text. If you do it just on that line, it'll do it for the entire line. Super helpful uh, things when I do Eclipse at work. Uh, it doesn't do this for me and I really miss it from Visual Studio Code. So another one here, uh, one that I use all the time also is Command A, that just selects all. So if you're in a document, you wanna copy everything that's in there, you can Command A to, to select it all and then Command C and then paste it somewhere else. A lot of times I'll do, uh, I'll kind of copy off a file. So I'll get all the text and I'll put it in a new file and then make some changes and see what happens so that I'll, I have that quick reference I can go back and get. But in general, if I want to select everything, I just Command A and I get it all. There's also uh, Command Z for undo and Command Shift Z for redo. These are, I mean, I use these infinitely when I'm working. So if I if I type in a P tag and I type in something, I realize, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I can Command Z to, to go back. And then if I realize, well, I really did want that, I can Control or Command Shift Z to redo it. So uh, an example here would be if I want to change this to an H1 and this to an H1, I realize, ah, that's not really what I want to do. Command Z gets me back to P. And then I say, oh, I really did want to do that. Well, I can Command Shift Z 
to get uh, to redo the things that I had already done. So Command Z and Command Shift Z. All right, so there's there's also this this idea of navigating with your arrow keys. Again, you want to you want to not use your mouse or you want to use it as little as possible when scrolling through and selecting text and stuff like that. So I use a lot of my arrow keys. And so those obviously go line by line, up and down, and character by character, uh, left and right. You can also do hold down option, and it'll go word by word. So this, if you only want to go in a few words, it's a lot easier to do this than it is to go all the way across or to get your mouse and click there. So uh, the same kind of thing, let me put my cursor here in the middle. If I hold down command and do right, it'll take me all the way to the end. If I hold down command and go to the left, it'll take me all the way to the beginning. So if you want to get to the end of the line to do a return, super, super quick, command and left or right um, will get you to the end or the beginning of the line. Now, this same, the same stuff that we just did to navigate, if you hold down the shift key, you can, you can highlight text or select text. So if I hold down shift and just, uh, just do left and right, obviously it'll pick up uh, the characters that I'm highlighting. If I hold down shift and then option, it'll do word by word highlighting. If I then do shift and command, it'll go all the way to the end, all the way to the beginning. So again, if, if, if I know like from here, I wanna delete the rest of this, I hold down shift, command, and then do uh, arrow key right, delete it, and now I'm good. I could also, let's say I wanna get rid of, let's say I wanna get rid of all of this text. So if my cursor is right here and I wanna get rid of all of that text, but not this P tag, well, I could, I could start here and I could do command shift to get all the way to the end, then just hold down shift to get rid of those last couple characters to save that closing P tag. Another tool here that you can use is the ability to move lines up and down. So let's say that I wanna move uh, Hermione to the top, again, all my Harry Potter references. I can select it, I can hold alt and then up arrow, it'll move it to the top. And then I can uh, hold Ron and do an alt and go up. Again, similar to these other commands that we've seen, we don't necessarily have to select the line, we can just move our cursor to that line and then use it uh, the same way. So I'm just on this line, holding down Alt and then moving up and down, toggles Harry and Ron up and down. So you can also do that for a selected amount of text. So let's say that I've got Harry, Ron, and Hermione here and I wanna move them up. I can move it all the way up here. It keeps my formatting here but it moved that entire section above. So that's the same exact command. You're just selecting multiple lines instead of doing it for one. And that'll be kind of a theme here. You've seen that in a couple of different places where same command can be applied, You know whether you're doing a word or, or a whole line or multiple lines. So the next trick here is, is really, really cool. The first time I saw this, my mind was like absolutely blown. But let's say that we want each of, each of these pieces of text inside the LI to be H1. Uh, tag. So we would come in here and do H1 and then scroll over and we could do H1 closing tag. Oh, that's not right. Closing tag. Uh, and we could do a little bit better if we do H1 and then do an option, option arrow to move over to the end of the word like we learned earlier. But we don't want to do any of that. Let's say we've got 50 or 100 items in here or whatever ridiculous number you can think of. You don't want to do that for every single one. So one of the, the coolest things I've ever seen, honestly, is doing uh, holding down Alt or Option on here and doing multiple clicks. And this gives me multiple cursors. So notice when I start typing, it's making all those changes on all the lines that I selected, which is fantastic, especially if you're doing this in a lot of places. So when we go to put our closing tag in here, notice that you know our closing tag doesn't line up with where we are. But we can do one trick if we hold down Command and Right to go down to the end of the line. The arrows didn't line up starting from left to right, but going backwards, since they all end with that same closing LI, the characters do line up. So then I can come in here and close off my H1, and it does it for each one of those lines with only having to write it once. Super, super, super useful. You can do this with as many cursors. I don't know if there's a limit or not, but as many cursors as you want, and it, 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 it helps so much when you've got, something, uh, you've got something that you need to repeat on multiple lines. So uh, they've also got shortcuts for creating comments. So in HTML, you've got the, the angle bracket, exclamation, dash, dash, and then dash, dash, angle bracket. Uh, I don't, I mean, it's kind of tedious to type that out, honestly. So here they've got uh, command K and then C. So you do command K, still hold down command, and then do C. 
and it gives you an empty comment and I can uh, type in here, this is my uh, auto comment thing, whatever. Um, get rid of that. So you can also, uh, you can also the same with all these other lines, is do that for an entire line. So if I've got, got my cursor on this Ron line and do Command KC, it does a comment and it wraps this entire line in that comment just the way we would want, which is really, really handy. And so you can additionally, the same as what we talked about above, select an entire section and do Command KC, and it wraps that entire section of code in comments. So this is really, really cool if you wanna be able to toggle on and off certain pieces of your HTML, you can comment it out, uncomment it out, all that kind of stuff. It works really, really nice and is really useful. So the next section here is searching, and, and the first one is something, I don't know if, if too many other people do this. I haven't seen many people do it. I, maybe I'm kind of by myself, but I think it's way more productive for me. But if I wanna search for a file uh, in Visual Studio Code, you've got this uh, menu bar on the left where you can see all of your files. And if I wanna go and open a file, it doesn't look too hard to come over here and just uh, click one of these. But this gets a lot more complicated if you've got tons of files and you've got tons of nested directories and it's really not that easy to just pick out one specific file. So I use this command all the time. It's command P and it allows me to search for a file. So I can type in my search, scroll down to index two, press enter and it opens the file right there for me. I do this all the time. I do it in Eclipse. It's a different command, but I do it in Eclipse to find a file because we've got a really big project with tons of files and directories. I never go through and search or never go through and manually look at the files. I just do a search, let it find it for me, press enter and it pulls it open. This is uh, another one that's pretty basic. So I'm assuming you guys have probably seen uh, to search in a file. So command F will open up the search window. I can search in here for Dumbledore and I've got one reference and it shows me it's right here and it'll, um, let's say if I search for Harry, I can actually press enter and keep going through all the instances of Harry that it's found. So that's just your basic uh, search in a file. You can also expand this to do a search and replace. So if I wanna replace Harry with Hermione, I can do this is my search, this is my replace, and then replace one by one or replace all. And the thing, the downside that I have here is by default, when you open up uh, with Command F, the search window, it doesn't do replace also. So I just, in, in preparation for this video, I found out that you can do a Command Alt F and that will go ahead and do this search and this replace, which is uh, saves me one extra step of having to click this. But again, every click that I can save myself of having to do something with my mouse is more beneficial and is more efficient. So that's actually a pretty handy uh, shortcut that I just found a few days ago. The last one I've got here for searching is, uh, let's say I wanna find something and I know it's in one of these files, I just don't know which file. I can do a command shift F and it pops open this search window and it searches in all of my files. So if I search body, it'll show me all of the instances of body, not only in my file, so index HTML, but also in another, in all the files. So I can click on one of these and it'll take me directly to that line in that other file. It'll open up that file and take me directly to that line. So again, super, super useful if you, you know that you've got some code somewhere, but you don't remember exactly what file it's in, you can search through all your files and find it that way. So the second to last section is uh, kind of working with the UI of Visual Studio Code. Um, the first one is Command W to close a file. So if, if, if I save my file and do Command W, it's gonna get rid of it, it's gonna close it. And then for me, I do Command P and search to get it back. So Command W um, works in Chrome, it works in uh, probably most of your other editors and stuff like that. That's one that'll be really common. Another cool thing about Visual Studio Code is it's got a built-in terminal. So down here at the bottom, I've got, um, I've got my terminal. I can do all my, my basic commands of looking at files and you guys might have a little bit of trouble seeing that. Let me see if I can, uh, but I can do an LS and I can do uh, you know a CD back a directory and CD into, let's see, CD back into the essential um, shortcuts in Visual Studio Code directory. So I can do all the things in here that I could do in a, in a real terminal window which is really handy because a lot of times in web development from the terminal, you start a server or do some compilation of your files or you're converting SAS to CSS or, or whatever it is, you do that in your terminal and I've just got it here and I can do it here without having to open up a separate program. The downside is it takes up some of your space, right? And I'm really big on saving myself space. So you can use control tilde to get rid of it and then just pop it open, toggle it open when you need it.
So it pops in and out. You can save your space when you need it, get rid of it when you don't. Another thing similar to that is Command B will toggle out this left panel. So again, when I've got it open, even though I can make it smaller, that's taking up a pretty significant amount of space, especially if I'm on my Mac without a monitor. I don't have that much space. So I can Command B to get uh, to close it or to open it when I need it and save myself a lot of space. Uh, another one here, and these, these are going to be the same in Chrome, in Safari, a lot of different ones, is being able to tab through your files. So, and I, I actually wrote this down wrong. Uh, let's, let's correct this real quick. So this is not command tab, it is control tab. So control shift tab. So control tab, if I, if I hold down control and then hit tab, it'll cycle through all the files that I have open. If I also hold shift, it'll do the same thing but backwards. So uh, control shift and then tab will go backwards, control tab will go forwards. I use this nonstop in Chrome, in Visual Studio Code, and other editors. I use it all the time. It's so much easier to me than going to the mouse and clicking on a file, then clicking back on another file. I get used to where the files are and I toggle through them. So the last couple here are just extras. Uh, so this first one in this last section is uh, formatting code. So I can select this uh, this section of code and notice that this p tag. Uh, let's just let's get it back here. Usually it'll have one indent, and now I've got two. And if I select this uh, this section of code and do Command K F, it's going to format that section and it's going to pull it back and get rid of that extra tab that I had. So if 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 you're not that great at keeping your code very uh, formatted, or if you if you are and you just kind of miss some stuff, you can select your code and have Visual Studio clean it up for you. Additionally, you can do the same thing, but for the entire document that you're in with doing Alt-Shift-F. So if I do Alt-Shift-F, it formatted this entire document and it got rid of, it lined up all of this stuff because it, it's inside of the body tag and it only needed one indent. Now I've got it structured a little bit differently on purpose, so I'm gonna leave it the way I had, but in general, you type out a file, you maybe made some formatting mistakes or whatever, do Alt-Shift-F, run this command, and it'll go ahead and format all your code for you. So the last thing I wanna show you guys is Command-KS. We'll show you all the shortcuts that Visual Studio Code has in it, and it'll show you all the key mappings, what it does, all that kind of stuff, and if you scroll down a long ways, because we have got a ton of these, there's like several hundred, if I keep scrolling down, you'll eventually get to a point where you see there's a lot of commands in here that don't even have mappings to them. So if you ever want to switch what the key mapping is or add a key map to one of these that doesn't have one, you can come into the keybindings.json file and you can overwrite the defaults. You can come in here and make all the changes that you want to. You can make it fit exactly what you want to do. If you don't like the way I use these shortcuts or the way the shortcuts are built in by itself, Go ahead and change them and customize them to how you feel and help yourself be more efficient and become a better developer. Again, it may not seem like much, but the amount of time that it takes to go from keyboard to mouse really adds up if you're sitting there writing code for a couple hours. I don't have any studies to show how many minutes or whatever in productivity you lose, but it's gonna make you a lot faster. Stay on your keyboard, use shortcuts, avoid the mouse as much as possible, and you'll become a better and quicker web developer and a developer in general. So, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys kind of understand the importance of staying away from the mouse and staying on your keyboard because the amount of time you spend going back and forward really takes away from your productivity and efficiency. If you want to get a copy of the worksheet that I've got here, comment below, find me on Twitter, James Q Quick, send me a message and I'll send it to you. You guys can practice these shortcuts on your own. Again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.